Leon can be built to devastate on the battlefield, but he's much more of a scalpel than a carpet bombing. When I first saw the stats for Leon, oh god, I, it was terrible. And I'm sure if you looked at him before watching this video, it was bad. But after a couple of shots of hard liquor, I realized that if you have a mage that seems bad, it's because you're meant to specialize with them. And I found a good niche and it was just staring me right in the face. Let's get to those builds. So let's get his digits. It looks like he has good hit points for a mage. It looks like he has almost a good attack. It's pretty close and he has a legendary tome. Taking a look at what he swings with now is basically just a raven tome a legendary one at least so you have a really strong might on it which is pretty cool and then if you take a look at the rest of his kit nothing here is super new he has attack and defense which actually helps him out a lot because his defense score is nothing to talk about his resistance is acceptable but his speed is so low it basically means he's going to get doubled by so much anyway I, I mean you really need to be able to find a way to help him out here I mean, even looking at these scores, I mean, the different categories here, I'll explain the ones that are relevant later. Right now, you can tell that these aren't passing grades here. So uh, let's just get on to the budget build, and we'll see what we can do with it. And I'm talking about the budget build, but honestly, uh, we're going to talk about it short only shortly, because we're going to go right into a real build, because they're both very similar, just one's a cheaper variant of the other one. As a matter of fact, uh, you can see I have Quick Repost too. Uh, Fury 3 is on there because it's a great skill. It's good on these uh, generalist mages. If you don't know what to do with them, if you give them that 3 to everything, it works out rather well. Surprise! Even though I'm not necessarily saying that you should 5-star him, I'm assuming that for all these builds you have 5-starred him and you have uh, Nagalfar equipped. And we're just going to go ahead and keep drive resistance for pretty much all these builds, but if you want to sub that out, you can go ahead and do that. One nice thing about this build and the next build is they're going to get you a lot of arena points compared to other mages, so that is one thing to consider at least. So what the deal here is, is that if you just give him that little extra bulk, uh, he can be basically a ranged attacker check. Currently in my rating system, I don't have something for purely all range because there's two different types. There's the physical and the magical damage. So the deflector is all magical damage, which means we're counting uh, dragon stones and we're counting mages and clerics in this as well. But for the most part, this is basically just him catching a bunch of wizards and throwing it back at them. And that's it. We're all done here. Unless you're doing arena points, you don't need anything more than quick repose too. I mean, seriously, if if you are five starring him, I'd imagine you're probably going to want to invest in him more. But if you just wanted to to build him out a little bit, this kit is pretty decent to go with because he'll at least be able to catch things and return fire on pretty much anything. He needs to have that extra bulk all across the board in order to be able to survive some of the volleys that are going to be thrown at him. Although uh, the next build is sort of going to fix that, but uh, well. Hold that thought. So now this is the build that I recommend putting on him. Uh, and honestly, the uh, seal is a little bit up in the air, but we'll discuss why in a moment. Uh, give him distant defense. Don't worry about triangle adept. Give him distant defense. He needs to have that on there so that he can continue to do his job. Now, if you put that on him uh, in the against the general population, he's not going to do as well as with Fury even, uh, let alone uh, Triangle Adept on some matchups, uh, not all of them obviously, but whenever it comes down to it, Distant Defense lets him do his trick again and again, and in the DPT, Deltrans PvP threats we're going to see in a moment, uh, it doesn't affect anything. So I recommend Distant Defense so that he can continue to be a supportive member of your team, because it's not like you're ever just going to find one threat that you need him to catch. You're going to have him want to catch multiple and so distant defense lets you do that quick repost three is here uh it's not like and you you will stay within quick repost three range better than quick repost two range and if you use the distant defense like i was talking about especially if you use it as the seal as well you're gonna be able to do just fine moonbow is the special you want to use on him uh glimmer is not gonna get you as far at least if you don't support him if you're gonna go ahead and just say no you better pull your own weight because every other mage i own does uh except for nunu that slacker then you're gonna want to have moonbow on him to be able to pick up his own slack. Uh, even then, it's not like he's always going to get it to uh, to pop when he needs it, but since it only has a cooldown at 2 and he's guaranteed to get 2 swings, uh, it's going to happen very, very often. Enemy attacks him. 
He gets two swings. Oh no, it's gonna happen every time. Let's take a look at the obituaries in the DPT. Uh, five wins whenever he is initiating, nine whenever he's not. This is not a plethora of wins here. He's not exactly flush with them, but they're all important and they're all good wins. Now, an initiation, this isn't what we're making this build for, but he does get a couple of wins there. And there's quite a few people that you shouldn't initiate against. And really, that's a lot of distant counter people. Uh, that's a lot of people that are blue. So just stay away from that. He, he's not a mage that's meant to go against the normal melee tanks. You don't want, you could throw him against somebody who doesn't have distant defense, but don't expect him to kill anything. You can go ahead and do that if you want, but it's just meant to whittle something down. Uh, that way, in case it's like, oh, well, Effie already charged up, and I just need to get rid of a couple of hit points so that so-and-so can get in there and get it without dying. If that's what you need to do, then it, he's there for you as an option. But like I said, he's very surgical. In order for him to dominate and destroy your opponents, you have to make sure that you're only targeting the ranged attackers. And here, the only ranged attackers that are causing us any problem are souped up blue mages. Yeah, like I said, they have to be powered up. If they're toting around a blade tome and you catch them off guard, if you're able to pull them away from their support, Wonderful. Take him out. He can handle that, especially if you give him two distant defense seals. Now, this is the thing is that he really is a specialist mage in this case, but he has the ability to handle all the range stuff that comes at him in addition to the uh, all the archers and rogues that come at him. It's really great. I mean, he's going to be killing anything that's not a souped up blue mage or if they have a fire uh, sweep or but yeah, fire sweep weapon or skill, then that's going to be a problem. But otherwise, he's handling all of these. That is very important because you're going to find these guys on pretty much every arena team. You're going to find them in every map. You are going to take care of them all. And that's pretty good. Now, you can't do Reinhardt regardless. Uh, if he's not powered up, if he's not the optimal build, uh, and I think pretty much everybody's running optimal build anymore, but if you are find one that's not plus attack or isn't running uh, death blow for the A slot, have fun! Go kill it! <laughs> you can bait that and you'll be fine. Uh, you gotta be careful. you be able to bait the uh, quick uh, pulse version of him if you have guard as your C slot and you'll be able to do it without this build, but you need quick repost in order to get the rest, so uh, that's one vote against guard. So I usually wait to the end of the videos to do the build that I am most excited about, but I do have a couple other ones to talk to you about just to show you what you could get into with him, especially if you got rid of his Tome Naglfar. So for starters, I'm not going to show a whole build using Owl Tome. I did not like how underperformance it was on him. There's other candidates that you do that a little bit better and to be honest with you he just does not have as much bulk as you would expect even with all the combining of buffs. I mean like I give him benefit of the doubt here guys when I was doing the math and while it wasn't a bad number the amount of resources you had to dump into him to do that was a little bit crazy so I'm not even gonna do it but you know uh I mean, if you cluster all your heroes together in one spot, yeah, you should have a powerhouse, and you could do that if you wanted to. Another one that I evaluated and really didn't like was a keen uh, wolf tome. He just doesn't pull through in the way that you would need him to uh, with it. So don't waste the resources on giving him a keen wolf tome. There's no point. And he's a terrible blade tome user on his own, but in this next build, it should look familiar because I recommended it with Oliver. Basically, you have to have the Brash Assault seal in order for this to work. If you don't have the Brash Assault seal, then that's it. But if you do have the Brash Assault seal, you can go ahead and build him uh, like... I recommended Oliver. Uh, you could build this. A lot of people have already built other people like this, and this is why it's in the back, is because it's coming overused. It's not super easy for him to use, as we'll see in the obituaries. And overall, it is still a big expenditure of resources, and you need a particular seal to make this work. The other build, you had a little flexibility, but you need Barash Assault for this. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. So what this is doing, if you haven't seen this before, he has a terrible speed, he has terrible stats overall to be a Blade Tome user, but if you get him down to 50% with Brash Assault, he's going to do a double tap on 
all people who could retaliate on him. Okay, so that means people with distant counter. This means all the ranged people. He's not going to get a double tap using Brash Assault on all the normal ground pounders or even the flyers if they're uh, melee range. It doesn't matter. He's not going to get that second tap. But against everybody else, he will. And with Desperation, he gets them both in the row. So what you want to do is you want to go out there, get punched in the face, and or use Reciprocal Aid if you want to substitute that. And then you want to go ahead and just, you can continue to just mow a lot of people down right after that. His kills are very impressive. Now before I go to the obituaries, just want to mention that Defiant Attack is here because once you get below 50%, you get a plus 7 bonus. And that bonus is visible, it's not just during combat, it is there all the time. So for a Blade Tome, that 7 turns into plus 14 attack. And that gives him a huge boost. Remember, he had a pretty decent attack score. This puts him over the top, and this lets him just get all kinds of kills almost for free. You know, just gotta be punched in the face. Let's head on over to those obituaries, and we're taking a look at the DPT here again. So here in the obituaries, you can see what I'm talking about. 27 and 3 on initiation whenever he's all charged up. Uh, that sort of flips around whenever you're being attacked, and so that's a part of the problem here. He doesn't have a lot of people he could just go up and block and get himself to that 50% threshold. That's the big key here. You need to get below 50%. Uh, either he has just enough bulk to bounce things, or he has not enough and he just dies. I mean, look at that number. That's a lot of losses whenever he's being initiated on. But the number of people we're killing, once we get charged, might make it worth it for you. If you don't have a big nuking mage, if you're like, oh, I don't have a good red mage, you can go ahead and do this. But here's the thing. I feel a little bit terrible bad-mouthing him in his own video, but Leon gets shown up by Sophia in this regard because honestly uh, think of it this way even if you had the feathers that you're gonna pump into Leon but not Sophia you can easily easily get a bunch more Sophia's they're given out for free once in a while uh, they are something that you can upgrade to four star very easily and to be honest with you a plus 10 four star Sophia handles this exact build better <laughs> than what Leon does. But Leon handles this well. Not to mention Sophia, you could actually pull a good IV for her. You don't want to worry about speed, you just want to go for attack, and so that'll make her attack better. I mean, I I feel bad. I feel really bad, but this, while this build has good numbers, it's not a good build for him. So we can lament together in the comments. Let me know, are you happy with Leon or are you disappointed in him? Go ahead and put that down there. And while you're at it, if you like your Fire Emblem information hot and fresh like Grandma's cookies, hit that subscribe button. My name is Dale Tran. Thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate all of you. And until next time, take it easy.